when I was thinking about this, I was thinking about John chapter 21. In John chapter 21, the Lord had already been to the cross, and he had uh, resur been resurrected, and it had been two Sabbaths. And he uh, told the disciples to go to the Sea of Galilee, to a place where he had done most of his ministry, and where these disciples, most of them, had grown up in that area, and they knew the area very well. And it had been the third Sabbath. Now, just to remind you that the day for them began at sunset. A day went not from sunrise to sunrise, but from sunset to sunset. So at the end of their Saturday, their Sabbath, when the, it became dark, the new day began, Sunday, the first day of the week, and Peter, uh, I'm, I'm not sure what place they were staying, but he was there with seven of the other disciples and maybe more, but we know seven joined him when he said, I go fishing. We don't know all the reasons why. We don't know what he was uh, thinking about. Some have said maybe he had bills to pay and needed to catch some fish to pay some bills. Some said he was just bored because he didn't have other things to do with his week. After spending three and a half years every day with the Lord, walking with him, seeing the, the things, the amazing things that God had done in the life of Jesus, Maybe he just came to the place where he was thinking, I don't know what I'm supposed to do. I'll go back to doing what I know best, what I've always done. I'm a professional fisherman. Fisherman fish. And he said to the others, I'm going fishing. Six others arose and went with him, and seven went out and got in the boats. We know that one of them was probably his brother, Andrew. We know probably... Uh, James and John, they had their own boat as well. They had made their living. So really, two small boats, but two professional boats. And they went out to fish at night. We also know that this was two weeks after the Passover. And Passover is always when there is the full moon. The full moon is gone. We don't know if it was cloudy or not, but... They went out into the depths of the lake. They knew the lake well. And they threw the nets over it and fished that night with probably the only light being a torch in the boats. And what a night it was. When you go fishing, your desire is to catch fish. And they knew the lake well and they had done it many, many times, but this time they went out and they caught nothing. When day has come, the light is come on, coming up and they're rowing back into the shore and still having the net. And they're in the, the narrows, the, the close to shore as they're coming in, drawing the net in the shallows. And there was someone up on the beach and said those words to them, have you got any food? Have you caught anything? In the words that no fisherman wants to ever have to say, no, I've caught nothing. I mean, he couldn't even exaggerate and said, I've caught a few. But he caught nothing. And the one on shore said, well, if you'll take your net and cast it to the other side of the boat, and I don't know why. They probably would have been insulted by hearing such words. We're professionals. We know what we're doing. And you're telling us, but for whatever reason, they cast their net to the right side of the boat and immediately felt something totally different. It began to pull and the tug of the, the net. John, the writer of the Gospel of John, says that they caught fish, 153 fish. And John says, and they were big ones too. 
And I don't know what was going through John's mind, but he looked up and he saw the one at the shore and he made that pronouncement. And he said, it is the Lord. This was the third time Jesus had appeared. And it was a shock that ran through Peter's soul as he looked up to the, to the shore again. And maybe he was thinking back to a time before when Jesus was with them and, and said, if you catch, cast your net on the other side. And they did to the point where they could not bring in all the fish that they had caught. But Peter's soul was so raptured by the love of his Savior that he saw on the shore that he, he didn't care about anything else. There were seven of them out there, most likely four and three. But he just jumped into the water and swam to the shore because he could not wait to get to his Savior once again. And when they got the boats to shore, probably still dragging the nets, probably didn't take time to get the fish into the boat. And as they're pulling the fish to shore, what a joyous struggle it was to pull in the catch of the night. But even more joyful than that, to look over and see the one that they love so very much. And a fire. And breakfast, cooking on the fire, all done. Now they had fished all night and caught nothing and had to admit to it that they caught nothing. And breakfast was cooked and ready for them, but Jesus said, bring some of what you have and we'll cook it too. Isn't it funny to go from nothing to everything just because Jesus is there. When I thought about this, I also thought about John chapter 6, a time when they were on the other side of the Sea of Galilee, up the hills where the crowds had followed. And after preaching for three days, Jesus looked to his disciples and said, they've come a long way and they have nothing to eat. Give them something to eat. Once again, they had to say, we have nothing. We have nothing. All they could scrounge up was a, a little boy's sack lunch, some dried fish, and something that we would look at as no more than a dinner roll. And he said, well, bring it to me. And the Bible tells us 5,000 men as well as women and children were there. And Jesus prayed and blessed. Are you hearing me? And took of that which was really nothing. But before the Lord, he broke it and fed them. And all were fed. And all were satisfied with what had been provided. They came with nothing and found the bounty of everything. Just like we came with nothing and found everything. And when we come to the Lord's table, it's symbolic, it's not literal, but it shows us the body that was put on the cross of Calvary and the beating that it took and the pain that he endured, the love that was shared, the life that he gave, the life that he took back so that he could give it to us, and the blood from the wounds of the cross that literally fell to the ground but never in waste. Because the gift of life. The Bible says that life is in the blood. Jesus shed his blood. The wounds of the cross are the wounds of love that cleanse us from all of our sins. And we are told to partake of the Lord's Supper. And we're told that as often as we do it, to do it in remembrance of him. I don't know if Peter went fishing simply because he was going back to the old life 
But that day he realized Jesus had words for him. Do you love me, Peter? Lord, you know I love you. Feed my lambs. Feed my sheep. I'm grateful that Jesus made a way that I could know him and I could know the bounty of the generosity of his hand and his love and his goodness and his forgiveness. I'm grateful that I come with nothing and yet I have everything in Christ. I know that there's nothing that I could give except my life that as his life was broken for me, I could give my life for him. Broken. Spilled out. And to this I am grateful. To this I am thankful. 